Hey, good morning. We have talked about the burden of leadership. We've talked about the benefit of leadership. And now I want to talk about the blessing of leadership. Even as I posted that video yesterday, there are several of us who at one time or another, maybe you are there right now, have thought, man, who am I supposed to be looking at though? Who is my Jethro? Who's my Paul? Uh, who are the people that are really walking alongside me to mentor me and to disciple me? There are many times where we are in seasons where we feel like we don't have those people. I believe the word of God addresses that. If you don't have a Jethro in your life right now and you feel like you are walking around trying to figure out how to do life, I just need you to hear what the word of God has to say in Exodus 19 going into Exodus chapter 20. This is the blessing of leadership. God wants to lead you. Jesus Christ died and he said, I'm going to my father so that you wouldn't be left comforted, comfortless. He said, I'm going to my father so you won't be left comfortless. He left us his Holy Spirit who is there to guide and lead us and to tell us the truth. And even in this case, we see what that's like. So let me point out a couple of things that I learned as I'm reading through. The first thing is exactly two months. This is chapter 19, verse one. Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. So it's only been eight weeks since they left Egypt. That means in the last eight weeks, they've been through the parting of the Red Sea and crossing, seeing the dead bodies of the Egyptians wash up on the shore. They have seen the water of Marah become sweet as Moses throws in the wood. But they arrive there three days journey with no water. They have come to Rephidim. They have fought against the Amalekites. They have been provided quail and manna. Folks, it's only been eight weeks. We act like, because I think we're often not as familiar with the actual narrative itself. We're familiar more with the overall story. But the narrative itself says it's only been two months, eight weeks since they had been separated from Egypt. And so here they are now at the base of Mount Sinai. Moses goes to the top of Mount Sinai and the Lord called to him. And this is what the Lord says. Please listen carefully as we talk about the blessing of leadership. Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Let me just pause for a second and talk about how the Lord uses our life experience to build history with us. And then in building that history with us, we can build upon that history to get a sense for where he might be calling us, what he might be calling us to do. And so he reminds Moses first and foremost that he's supposed to teach these instructions and that he has seen exactly what God did. It reminds me of First John chapter 1 that John really reminds us that he is talking about what he has experienced. Listen, part of the blessing of leadership is that God wants to lead you. He's building a history with you and he's giving you a testimony. And as many people have said, you can't have a testimony without having tests. You can't have a message without having some mess. And so that said, you need to understand that whatever God is putting you through is practice for the place to which he's calling you. And the place that you need to go to next, the place where you need to grow to next, is not going to be the same place that you were before. And so he first says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And you have seen what the Lord has done. Again, write it down, rehearse it, and continue to remind yourself. The next thing he says in verse 4, you know how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. What God is communicating to Moses is this blessing of leadership. Moses, you have not been left alone in this. Not only have I carried you, but then I've provided you with people like Jethro, Aaron, Hur, Joshua, to come alongside you and help you do the work. Oftentimes, we feel like we are alone and we can see that Jethro was telling Moses, man, you can't do all of this by yourself. It wasn't that the leaders weren't provided around Moses. 
It was that Moses was not utilizing the resources that he had available to him. And I know I have been guilty of that in times past because I want to steward things well. And I think, hey, if I don't do it, nobody else will. But that's not the proper way to think in leadership. The proper way to think in leadership is not based upon my limitations, but based upon my resources. And so what is allowed to happen, because Moses has divided up labor and delegated authority and had the blessing of the leadership of God himself, and Moses was humble enough to listen, Moses then finds himself on Mount Sinai, and he receives what we know to be the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. I just want to allow everybody to be reminded that the way that people think about the Ten Commandments is often unbiblical. Why do I say that? Because we just make it about the rules. But I need you to know it's about the rules of relationship. God is trying to teach us how to love. Remember, you have to think about all that is occurring. They're eight weeks from Egypt. They're eight weeks from 430 years of slavery. And God gives them commands in light of what they've experienced in Egypt. And those commands to me are based upon five realities to me, okay, to me. They're based upon how we give our attention. They're based upon affection. They're based upon authority. They're based upon allegiance. And they're, of course, based upon action. As we look through these, again, think about this in light of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, verse 2 of chapter 20, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. He reminds them of that right early on. The Egyptians worshipped all kinds of gods. That's what they saw for 430 years. And so why is his first commandment then, you must not have any other god but me? Well, because they saw all of the Egyptian gods. And I'm going to be real. If I put myself in the seat of a Hebrew, I don't understand why I wouldn't want to worship the gods of the Egyptians. I mean, for heaven's sake, they led for 430 years. And if Yahweh wasn't doing anything for me, during that 430 years, I don't understand why, as a Hebrew, I wouldn't be paying attention to their gods and going, well, it seems like their gods are blessing them. But he says, don't have any other gods before me. Secondly, he says, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind, of any image, of things in heaven or things in earth or things in sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, and I'm jealous. I will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. So again, we see... Attention given to God alone, affection given to God alone. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Listen, our past affects our present. Who we worship will affect how we work. We must understand that reality if we're going to live for Jesus. Verse 6, I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. The third one is about authority. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. That means if you take his name to mean something that it doesn't, if you slap his name on stuff that he never approved, he's not with that. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days for ordinary work, but the seventh is a Sabbath day to rest, dedicating that day to the Lord. So the Lord says, I want one whole day out of every week of your life. Why does the Lord do that? Well, because I can't imagine they had a Sabbath in, as, as being slaves in Egypt. No, the Lord is saying, look, I'm giving you a day where you can completely rest on me and in me. Do you understand that when you look at these laws, these rules of relationship, the whole goal is that God really desires relationship with us. And he's given us the parameters, the expectations of what he wants that relationship to look like. Listen, the blessing of leadership in a relationship is when somebody can say, hey, this is what I expect out of you. This is what I expect out of our relationship, our friendship. This is where I want our marriage to go. This is where I want our employee-employer relationship to go, mentor-protege relationship to go. The blessing of leadership is that God wants to be that for us and wants to do that for us. And so we think about the what we call the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, in two distinct tables. But I want you to know he gives not only rules of relationship, but the laws of love. Honor your father and your mother. Then you'll live long upon the earth, full of life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Listen, do not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet what your neighbor has. You must not covet his house, his wife, male or female servants, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. God's whole goal 
in these laws is to teach us how to love one another. His goal is not to just give us rules of engagement, but rules of relationship. Not just laws of legality, but laws of love. He gives us standards for service as well. I want to end with thinking about this. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn, and when they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, this is what they said to Moses. You can speak to us and we'll listen, but don't let God speak directly to us or we'll die. They had fear of God's authority, but I just thought it seems like they're projecting onto God what they've experienced with Pharaoh. I just wonder how much of their experience, and we know it's a lot, but their experience is really affecting their view of God, their view of Moses, their view of one another. And I understand that. It's not excusable, but it's explainable. And because I understand that, as I look at this, I really get that when Moses says, hey, don't be afraid, God has come in this way to test you. And so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. Lastly, the blessing of leadership gives us the standard for service. God tells them what an altar should be like. And he says, don't make any idols of silver or gold to rival me. He keeps going back to that idol piece. But then he also says, build an altar for me made of earth and offer your sacrifices there, your burnt offerings and peace offerings, sheep and goats and your cattle. Verse 25, he says, if you use stone, build my altar, use to build my altar, only use natural stone, uncut. Don't shake the stones with a tool, for then it becomes unfit. What I hear the Lord saying is, hey, the more natural, the better. I want to use the ordinary, and I want to make us extraordinary. Listen, the blessing of leadership is that the Lord wants to take ordinary you. I know I've said this before, but again, it's consistent in Scripture. The Lord wants to take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. The Lord has provided us with rules of relationship, laws of love, and standards for service that just let us know he wants to lead us. And the people he provides for us, he just wants those people to be used by him to lead us in the way that we should go. You'll hear that voice behind you, he says in the book of Isaiah, telling you which way to go. You need to listen and heed that voice. The blessing of leadership is the Lord is there to teach us which way you are to go. And then he's not calling us to any place he hasn't been before, even into suffering. Because that's who he is. Remember, the story of redemption is unjust suffering. And the Lord has taken us is taking us to every place he's been. I hope that you are willing to challenge me as I am hopefully challenging and encouraging you to follow him wherever that is, to join him, as Henry Blackaby says, to join him wherever he's working. Hope that that blesses you today as you lead the blessing of leadership as the Lord is in front of you. Follow him wherever he goes, like my buddy. Love you. Peace.